these prophets and apostles are really embarrassing themselves. I spent a lot of time going through the scriptures and sharing God's truth. And in doing so, you also have to do what we're commanded to do, which is to let people know of different dangers. Just like there is a sex offender registry list where people know who the offenders are, what their names are, where they are, so that they can be avoided, so that you don't have to find yourself in danger. The Bible also commands us to do the same thing for those who are wolves, who are false teachers. The problem is the wolves don't seem to like that too much. As a matter of fact, unfortunately, there are some people who don't take kindly to people um, calling out the wolves. Who There are some people who don't take kindly of you exposing false teachers. Now, we're not out here trying to expose their personal lives and whatever sin that they may be involved in. That's not for us. But in terms of what goes against scriptures, remember Paul says to uh, mark and avoid, and it's in regard to doctrine, sound teaching. Paul's the one who says that the time will come people will not endure sound doctrine. And what does he say prior to that? To reprove as well as to rebuke. And how long to do so? He says with all long suffering or with great patience. In other words, constantly preach the word in season and out of season. How long is that? Well, that's all the time. And so you've got some people who just don't like it. These are the people that I've said that have either unintentionally or intentionally lied, given false prophecies. We've covered those false prophecies uh, in the past, given these vague statements and saying or attributing them to the Lord. God said this, the Lord told me that, this, this, this. However, these are people who claim to have a lot of power, but never show it. They can cast demons out of people in their own church. They can heal people with no proof, with no evidence. But the moment someone says or does what exactly John tells us in 1 John, that says that not all spirits are from God, that we should test them. Well, once we try to test them, we are called heretic hunters. We are called Pharisees, all these different things. What you do not see, however, is you don't see them defending their scriptural backing. Just because they have a platform doesn't make them right. Just because I have a platform doesn't make me right. If it's not backed by scripture, if it's not what the word of God says, it's not right. It's not true. What does the scripture actually say about that? Well, Troy Black ought to take his own advice. Troy Black will not defend himself scripturally, nor will some of the other people, the Daniel Adams of the world, the Alexander Paganis, the Isaiah Saldivars, not even the Marcus Rogers of the world. None of these people are. Now, they'll tell you they will, but they never will. How do I know so well? What do they do? Now, I'll leave Marcus Rogers out of this because he hasn't done so, but people like the uh, Joel Osteens, people like the Stephen Furtick's, people like the D David Diga Hernandez's. These are people who have issued copyright strike complaints or copyright takedown notices. Why? Because if you show anything where they might be wrong in error, scripturally, they don't want you to see that. They will instead want to have your videos taken down to give you a copyright strike. Now, thankfully, none of those have lasted. As a matter of fact, many of them, YouTube saw them for what they were. They were bogus and YouTube just noticed us that an attempt was made, but they de they determined previous to making to us that these were not legitimate. Why would they do so? Now, the Bible does tell us, he says, but sanctify Christ in your heart and always be ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to, to give an account for the hope that is in you. That's in terms of Christ, in terms of doctrine. I'm not asking you to give an account of what you do in your personal life. I'm not asking you to give an account uh, in regards to your own personal sin. No, but in, in, in regards to doctrine, you are to give an account. And if you don't know, well, then fine. Take time, study, say, I don't know, I'm not sure about that, and then come back. We've offered to have dialogue with these people. They don't want to. What do they do? Block you, call you a Pharisee, all these other things as though we are in the wrong. How could we be in the wrong when we're literally doing what the Bible says to do? Our job is to undermine anyone who does not give the scriptures to expose them, as Paul has said. And so these people, if you had biblical backing, you would bring it. They don't bring it because they don't have any. These people are willing to play to the ears of those who have some sort of itching or tickling uh, in their ears. They'll give them that, what they want to hear. They'll do all the things that the Bible says a false teacher is going to do. And unfortunately, there are too many people who don't value the word of God, who don't read it and are unaware. As a matter of fact, they are blissfully ignorant because they enjoy what they're hearing. Although they're not being delivered, how do we know they're not being delivered? Because they're constantly in attendance of their deliverance ministries, never being delivered, but willing to go back week after week, month after month, 
and continue to pay and support. I say that if what you're getting hasn't helped you yet, maybe it's time that you find something different. And if what you're looking for isn't found in the scriptures, then I submit to you that you're not a believer at all or not a very good one. And as for those who don't want to be held accountable to the scriptures, my simple suggestion is why not quit and go into the world of entertainment where you probably belong. Mm -hmm.